used to always celebrate the fourth Sunday in ordinary time. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. We begin our liturgy by calling to mind our sinfulness and asking the Father's forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you call us to be happy in spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you are peacemaker and son of God. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy. Lord Jesus, you invite us into your kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Grant us, Lord our God, that we, that we may honor you with all our mind and love everyone in truth of heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Zephaniah. Seek the Lord, all you humble of the earth who have observed his law. Seek justice, seek humility. Perhaps you may be sheltered on the day of the Lord's anger. But I will leave as a remnant in your midst a people humble and lowly, who shall take refuge in the name of the Lord, the remnant of Israel. They shall do no wrong and speak no lies, nor shall there be found in their mouths a deceitful tongue. They shall pasture and couch their flocks with none to disturb them. The word of the Lord. Thanks.
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Consider your own calling, brothers and sisters. Not many of you were wise by human standards. Not many were powerful. Not many were of noble birth. Rather, God chose the foolish of the world to shame the wise. And God chose the weak of the world to shame the strong. And God chose the lowly and despised of the world, those who count for nothing, to reduce to nothing those who are something, so that no human being might boast before God. It is due to him that you are in Christ Jesus, who became for us wisdom from God, as well as righteousness, sanctification, and redemption, so that as it is written, whoever boasts should boast in the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he had sat down, his disciples came to him. They began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the land. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall be shown mercy. Blessed are the clean of heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they insult you and persecute you and utter every kind of evil against you falsely because of me. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward will be great in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In the year 2000, my wife and I were on the threshold of our 25th wedding anniversary. Looking ahead to that milestone year, we decided to gift each other with a pilgrimage to the Holy Land, where we would renew our wedding vows in the church at the wedding feast of Cana. In August of 2001, we began our pilgrimage at the Church of the Beatitudes. Peaceful and serene, high on the hill overlooking the Sea of Galilee, we started walking in the footsteps of Jesus and his followers. Most scripture scholars see Jesus teaching the Beatitudes on the mountain as parallel to Moses receiving the Ten Commandments on Mount Sinai. Jesus declared that the two greatest commandments were love of God and love of neighbor. His teaching is a way of love, a way of blessed happiness, a way of joy, the way to holiness. Rather than viewing the Beatitudes as eight more commandments to pile on top of the original 10, I see the Beatitudes as kind of a road map as to how best to navigate love of God and love of neighbor. For God is love, and whoever remains in love remains in God and God in him. So let's take a look at these eight Beatitudes. Number one, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Being poor in spirit is not a glorification of poverty or a demonization of wealth, but more of a spirit of detachment. If our lives are already full of things and we are already filled with ourselves, we won't be receptive and open to experience the blessing and abundance of God and neighbor. Number two, blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. People who truly mourn experience their hearts aching in the realms of vulnerability and emptiness. Blessed are those mourners who are able to release the tight grip on only good feelings, who are able to release their cling to only happy thoughts. With their open hands reaching out to the compassionate neighbors, to companions and solidarities, and from these relationships flow confidence, assurance, and comfort. Third, blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the land. 
The meek are gentle people, free from the compulsion to worldly power, free from the compulsions of untamed wild energies and passions within and around them. Rather than destroying the earth, once the ego is detached from the sources of fear and scarcity, one is able to inherit the earth. For blessed are they who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be satisfied. How often do we desire our own will be done, or believe that our own personal agendas deserves primary attention? Hungering and thirsting for righteousness means spending time pondering divine inspiration and listening to the sound of the sacred in the silence of our hearts. Starting from this posture of receptivity, may we not change what we do every day, but rather how we do it. This spiritual reflecting leads to peace and joy in daily life. Five, blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Mercy, like love, is not so much what you give and take as much as who you are. God is mercy. God is love. When we become conduits of divine mercy, when we entrust people we care about to infinite love, we increase our capacity for compassion and love with ourselves and with others. And six, blessed are the clean of heart, for they will see God. So many concerns are constantly nagging at our heartstrings. Having a clean heart begins with ongoing discernment of the most important thing, the one sure thing, one's ultimate concern. When the human heart is not divided, when there's alignment between God's will and our will, when we are constantly aware of the presence of the sacred in our lives, we will better recognize the divine movements around us and within us. Seven, blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. What flows from hearts made gentle and undivided is the spirit of harmony and peace. God is love, the source and summit of love. When we see more connections than divisions, when we see the face of our Creator in all of creation, we become instruments of peace. And lastly, blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. We all want to be well-liked, but the desire should not dictate how we live. The overwhelming desire to please others and worry about what others think often results in making poor decisions. Releasing our preoccupations with how we are perceived enables us to live in the freedom of our true authentic self. We are all on a spiritual journey, not unlike a pilgrimage. It can be a treacherous journey with trials and tribulations all along the way. And at the same time, it could be a blessed journey filled with unmerited grace. In the Beatitudes, Jesus shows us a way to navigate this difficult world we live in. The Beatitudes tell us to find and experience divine presence even in difficult times. Christ is the way to holiness, the way of true happiness, the way of joy, the way of love. And we are called to be conduits, instruments of divine love. I believe in God, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. We bring our petitions to our Heavenly Father. For those men and women called to ministry in God's church, in the church throughout the world, may the gospel message they proclaim comfort the poor and humble, even as it challenges the proud and the powerful, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all nations of the world and for their leaders, may they govern with justice and equality, 
act decisively and courageously so as to bring about peace in the world, security to all nations, and safety for all peoples. We especially pray for all war-torn parts of the world. We pray, Lord, hear our prayer. For those who experience discrimination because of race, gender, or creed, and may we create a loving atmosphere where they may experience equality and inclusion as brothers and sisters in Christ, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the success of the 2023 Catholic Ministries Appeal, we belong to God. And through our participation, we not only show our love of God, but we demonstrate and share God's love with our neighbors, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For this faith community, that as we participate in the Eucharistic celebration, may the blessedness given us by the Spirit manifest itself in our deeds of justice, words of compassion, and our single-heartedness in service of God, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those suffering afflictions of body, mind, and spirit, may Christ grant them wholeness and health, and may they see the face and love of God shine in those who love and care for them. And we especially remember Carl Eggers, baby Ethan Perusona, Bill Rauch, and for all who have died in the peace of Christ, may they experience the fullness of the promise of eternal life, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For our needs held in the silence of our hearts, and for those intentions written in the Book of Petitions in the Eucharistic Chapel, including Leoncio Bacan, Lorraine Riddle, George Wisdom, and the people of the parish, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty God, may our prayers increase our love for you and one another. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this bread to offer, which earth has given, human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine, work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Bless us, God, forever. Pray, my sisters and brothers, my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. The Lord accept the sacrifice for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his church. O Lord, we bring to your altar these offerings of our service. Be pleased to receive them, we pray, and transform them into the sacrament of our redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. And lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death, and by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory is without, and we acclaim holy. Oh.
are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it, gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith we proclaim. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Ronald, our bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life. We praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation. But deliver us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant through peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us show one another a sign of peace. Peace, peace, peace. God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
Let us pray. Nourished by these redeeming gifts, we pray, O Lord, that through this help to eternal salvation, true faith may ever increase through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless us. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in peace. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. This is Louie, this is Gracie, this is Father Bob saying hello to everybody. And uh, it seems like, I uh, remember his little story, Ronald Reagan, when he was president, it seemed he, it seemed he often was like to poke a little humor, and, you know, make a little fun of the Soviets. And he used to tell an anecdote that he said that was going around about himself and Premier Gorbachev. He said the story went something like this, that uh, Reagan was visiting the Soviet Union and uh, he was with Gorbachev and they were in the, they were, they were uh, on, a, on a big super highway driving, you know, with the, with the limo driver and they both had an aide with them. Reagan had his aide and Gorbachev had his. So, they're t they're t so Gorbachev being the host, uh, giving him a tour of the Soviet Union, but all of a sudden, the, uh, Gorbachev asked the limo driver to pull off on the side of the road of this busy highway. Well, the limo driver pulls off to the side of the road, and Gorbachev looks at Reagan's assistant, he's for his own amusement, he says, listen, you, I want you to run across this highway and come back and, 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 and uh, run right back. And the, and the aide look at the aide says to Gorbachev, Look, hey, I have a wife and three kids. I'm not going to do that crazy thing right across this busy highway. And so Gorbachev says to his aide, he says, I want you to run across this highway and come running back. And with that, Gorbachev's aide gets up and runs across the highway and comes back dodging his cars. He's very risking his life. And with that, uh, Reagan's aide, Reagan's aide says, has said to the rest of the to Gorbachev's aide, he has a piece of, listen, why'd you do such a crazy thing? Why, what, what, why, did you, why did you run across the highway like that? Why did you do that? And Gorbachev's aide said, because I have a wife and three kids. <laughs> a Reagan story. Anyway, hope all is well with everybody. Love you all and uh, see you soon.